Hi, this is Junaid again with Acute Ischemic Stroke 2019 Guidelines Review. In the last lecture, I discussed indications and contraindications. And then in this lecture, we're going to discuss the other forms in which you should consider and maybe strongly consider giving TPA. So let's go ahead and review this again. So these are the contraindications that we discussed. And then these are the indications. Just to review again, according to the class of recommendation, you're looking at 2A, which is relatively moderate recommendation. Class 1 is, of course, a strong recommendation. And class 2B is a weaker recommendation. So whenever I'm presenting these, and you're going to see that in this brackets, as you can see, right at the end of the line, you can see the COR, which is the class of recommendation, pointed out right after the actual recommendation. So you should pay attention to those when you're discussing that. So let's get with it. So anyone with, that is presenting between the hours of three and a half to four and a half, technically the strong recommendations has been that they have to be less than 80 years old and do not have diabetes. But for those patients who are above 80 and have diabetes, you should consider giving TPA. And the recommendation, the class of recommendation for both of them is uh, for diabetes, mellitus, and prior stroke, COR is 2B. It's a weaker recommendation. But for age, above the age of 80, is COR 2A, which is sort of a modern recommendation. So in those patients, you should actually consider giving it. In patients presenting in mild disabling stroke between three to four and a half hour window. In those cases, you should also consider giving TPA and the COR recommendation is 2B in those patients. For wake up strokes, clearly with MRI, DWI, DWI and flare mismatch, you should consider giving TPA and the class of recommendation in this is 2A. Anyone with a pre-existing disability because of a prior stroke, maybe with a modified Rankin scale of two or even advanced dementias or dementias in general, as the, in those cases, there is clearly the recommendation to give, but it is a weaker recommendation to give TPA. Again, we are all trying to manage the benefit for the risk. And at the end of the day, the recommendations can be weaker, but again, the situation could be different. So all in all, you should have a discussion when, especially in these patients with the families, that why are you giving it? What is your rationale behind it? So at the end of the day, from a pure guidelines perspective, you should consider giving TPA uh, to those patients. Now, early improvement, and if that, in those situations where the patient is actually have showing some early improvement, but you still think that the improvement may not be enough or you have a, a serious insight that the potential, potentially patient can have a recurrence of or improvement and then again neurological deterioration or improvement is not enough, it is reasonable to give TPA to those patients and the class of recommendation is 2A. So it's a moderate recommendation to go ahead and give TPA to those patients. Seizure at onset, again, it is not a contraindication, and the class of recommendation is 2A, which is a moderate recommendation to give TPA on patients with seizure at onset. Blood glucose, if it is corrected, that is less than 550 and more than 400, in those cases, you should still consider giving TPA once corrected, and the patient is not showing improvement, and if you give TPA, that is reasonable to give at that point in time. Again, the class of recommendation is weaker. It is actually class 2B. In those patients who are on warfarin and has a and has an INR of one point less than 1.7, in those cases, they are not coagulopathic, quote unquote, and then there are now available point of care INR machines. They can actually look at it pretty quickly. In those patients, you should consider giving TPA. Again, the class of recommendation is 2B. It is a weaker recommendation. Uh, for those patients who had a recent dural puncture, lumbar puncture within the past seven days, go ahead and give TPA. Again, there's the class of recommendation is weaker, um, but at the end of the day, this is not a contraindication to give TPA. For those patients who had an arterial puncture within the last seven days, that is a non-compressible site. For example, subclavian. In those patients, the recommendation is to go ahead and consider giving TPA. Again, a weaker recommendation with a class of 2B. Recent major trauma, if the patient actually had a recent major trauma within the last 14 days, not involving the head, you should at least have a discussion with the family, consider the risk and benefits, and then go ahead and give TPA, again, a weaker recommendation after the class of 2B. Recent major surgery, same thing. Anything that has actually had a recent major surgery within the last 14 days, and if you are considering the patient is going to have TPA, 
and that happens to be honest with you uh, fairly uh, not uncommonly especially with femur fractures where you're considering having um, fat emboli and if you are actually seeing a large vessel occlusion and give send send the patient for thrombectomy that's fire but if you can't you should at least consider giving tpa to those patients of course you have to consider what would be the risk of bleeding from that particular surgical site is it compressible on that and of course talk to the surgeon uh, right away as soon as possible and then give tpa if the patient qualifies and is eligible again everything depends on the risk and benefit there is a risk of bleeding but if the patient has severe enough disability if the patient would have severe enough disability with aphasia living for her the rest of their life then you have to basically see what is the risk versus the benefit in these situations and not just the risk you always have to consider the benefit as well and if it's just a very mild stroke then of course don't give it so those are the things that you have to consider uh, and there, these, these are the judgment calls that stroke physicians have to make. Menstruation is not a contraindication, but if there is men heavy menstruation with clinically significant anemia, the recommendation is to get an urgent gynecological consult to see if the patient should be given TPA or not. Extracranial cervical dissections is not a contraindication, and go ahead and give TPA. Intracranial arterial dis uh, dissections, unfortunately, we do not have enough data to actually make a good recommendation. They actually say that in that, that unknown, uncertain, not well established, so therefore there's a weaker recommendation. Um, in general, uh, give it, uh, especially when there is, uh, you know, a difference uh, of then you don't know, maybe the dissection has been going on for some time. So... I have given in these cases, given that sometimes these are younger patients uh, that come with these situations and then they can have long lasting disability for the rest of their life. So intracranial dissections, again, very honestly, we do not have enough data, but the recommendation is still weak to be. Unruptured intracranial aneurysms, if they're less than 10 millimeters, go ahead and give it. Giant aneurysms, we don't know. Would you give it? Generally speaking, uh, if the blood pressure, I have to do not have to control too much. If the patient is actually having a sort of a large vessel site kind of stroke and I can drop the blood pressure, then I might consider it. Uh, but giant, giant aneurysm, I still would give it, but I would be very on top of things as far as blood pressure when the patient is in the neuro ICU. Uh, my CMBs, uh, these are cerebral microbleeds that are present for 1 to 10. Go ahead and give TPA. The level of recommendation is 2A. It is a moderate recommendation. In short, go ahead and give it. For, for more than 10, if there is a known C, uh, CMBs on the previous MRI, you should still consider it. The level of recommendation actually drops to CORB2, which is uh, a weaker recommendation. Patients who are getting very short-acting G GP2B slash 3A inhibitors like, like titrofiban, you may consider giving TPA while stopping the medication, giving it five minutes and go ahead and give TPA. In those cases, again, the level of evidence is weak, but in those cases, if you are considering uh, that the patient would benefit, again, depending on the amount of disability the patient is going to live with, go ahead and give TPA. For extracranial, extra axial, intracranial, in short, meningiomas kind of things, go ahead and give TPA. The level of evidence is moderate, CUR2A, so go ahead and give TPA if the patient has a history of meningiomas. In patients that are also presenting with an acute EMI, acute MI or a recent MI, go ahead and give TPA. But do not give the MI dose, of course, of the TPA. You're going to give the cerebral stroke dose of the TPA um, in those cases. In both cases, the recommendation is moderate for 2A. In patients with acute pericarditis, again, you have to weigh the disability level. If the patient has a severe disability that you're going to think is going to happen, then go ahead and give TPA. However, if the patient has moderate it, it, it's it's a little bit of a judgment call at that point in time. However, the, the recommendation in both situations is actually 2B because we don't really have a level of evidence. If you look at it, the level of evidence for both these situations is C. Patients who have interventricular thrombus or, in, or left arterial left ventricular thrombus, go ahead you know, give, consider giving TPA clearly if the patient is throwing clots from there. However, the question really is that you cannot heparinize this patient at a later date. Uh, you, you know, you cannot really start heparinization, heparinizing those patients. So in those cases, uh, you have to weigh the risk that if you're going to give TPA, you will not be able to heparinize for 24 hours. So it's always, it's always a tough situation at that point in time. What are you going to do? Uh, 
Um, in short, according to the guidelines, it is reasonable to consider it. It is a weaker recommendation, both to be. Uh, if it is a mild disability, generally speaking, and I think that the heparinization would be a better option to go, um, I would consider that. But for some reason, if the patient is going to have severe disability that you're going to live with, then at that point in time, I would consider giving TPA in those cases. Other cardiac diseases like myxoma, uh, fibroelastoma, etc., go ahead and give TPA in those cases. Again, the level of recommendation is not there, but the reason behind the recommendation strength is low is because there is no evidence. And since we don't have enough evidence, uh, at this point in time, it is a judgment call. And again, there's no strong contraindication. So therefore, consider giving those patients TPA. Procedural strokes, for example, cerebral angiography, acute, uh, you know, uh, cardiac catheterizations. In those cases, even, you know, if only for the procedure, the patient is heparinized, I've given protamine, just not anticoagulated for a long time. And then I have given TPA because, uh, those patients do very well uh, and there's a higher chance of these this could be posterior circulation strokes because while the catheter is moving through the aortic arch uh, the the artery to artery embolism in the posterior circulation is a major mechanism and they live with vertigo nystagmus ataxia and all that for the rest of their life which could be significantly disabling to people Systemic malignancy, if the patient has a life expectancy of more than six months, consider giving TPA. Pregnancy is not a contradiction, but definitely you need to be very cautious. Postpartum period within the last 14 days uh, is not well established. Again, these are all weaker recommendations, but you should consider giving TPA in these patients. Same thing with ophthalmological, if the patient has a history or a patient has you know, hemorrhagic retinopathy because of diabetes, you should consider giving TPA. However, again, in these patients, you should let the um, patient know that there is a chance that you can bleed through the retina. And that, again, if the patient has severity enough of that, uh, then you should consider taking the risk. This is all about risk and benefit. But the recommendations are pretty uh, solid in that regard that you should at least consider it highly and then uh, especially with ophthalmological conditions, the level of uh, the class of recommendation is actually 2A. Sickle cell disease, go ahead and give it. Hyperdense MC assigned, go ahead and give it. Illicit drug use. Again, illicit drug use would potentially be the reason of giving uh, of the stroke. And that is also, you have to remember that in those cases, you know, vasospasm secondary to cocaine, methamphetamine can cause a similar effect or actually cause significant irregular arrhythmia that can cause you to have a clot that goes into the brain. In all those situations, you should consider giving TPA. It is not a contraindication. However, they do increase the risk of having bleeding in the brain. The level of evidence is low. It's C, but the class of recommendation is 2A. Stroke mimics, again, in those cases, for example, we just discussed in hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia, you have corrected it and you can argue, well, this is possibly because of the blood glucose and some people just don't bounce back. That's a good possibility. But the, here's the issue. The risk of bleeding in the brain with a person who actually does not have a stroke is very low. And if the person has a stroke, then the Problem is that they can be disabled for life. So you, again, everything is about risk and benefit. So you should consider at least giving those patients um, TPA and have a discussion in your mind or at least openly with the family if you can. Because at the end of the day, the risk becomes very low. So the benefit is higher. Again, everything is about risk and benefit here. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Please like, subscribe, and share. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.